My favorite way to create a cinema graph is uh, using After Effects. I have a video here where all the people in the video is moving uh, somehow, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to isolate only the person on this side of the screen, so they will be the only person moving in the video. To do so, I just drag down my video into a new timeline and they take the pen tool on top here. And with the pen tool, I start isolating that person. I've also noticed that there is a subtle movement in the person with the yellow shirt here. So I will include that person in the cinemagraph as well. All I need to do with my pen tool is to go around the, the people that I want to keep moving in the video and make sure that I isolate them from the rest of the scene. There you go. When I close the mask, only that part of the video will be visible. Therefore, I'm going to tap the letter M on the keyboard once the layer is selected, and I'm going to focus on the properties of the mask. Just by clicking the little triangle beside the mask twice, I will assess to mask path, feather, opacity, and expansion. In this case, I want to feather a little bit the edges to make it a little bit smoother. However, the yellow edge of the mask doesn't really let me see exactly what I'm doing and how much I am softening the edges. Therefore, I'm going to use this little icon here in the switches of the composition panel to temporarily hide and show the mask path so that I can control better the feather amount. There you go. I'm also going to take the selection tool, and with the selection tool, I can control individually the points if I want to change the mask that I've created previously. In this case, I'm going to edit the mask a little bit to make sure that I will include the person behind in the animation. Then all I need to do is just to drag down another instance of the same video, make sure I will not move the CTI, Keep the CTI exactly where it is and go to Layer, Time, Freeze, Frame. By doing so, I'm going to stop the video underneath. However, the video on top will carry on moving. So the person on the right is not moving anymore because the only part that I've highlighted is on the left. I have to be very careful which part I highlight. Like in this case, for example, I can tell that here in this area, the pages of the book of the person on the right are still flipping. Therefore, I have to keep that part out of my animation and out of my cinema graph. I will take again my selection tool. I will shift click one of the points on my mask and reposition them in order to make sure that that part will not be visible. Here we go. Now I can play the video one more time. I'm going to select only three or four seconds of this video where the movement is uh, more subtle. I think this one is quite nice, for example, from four to eight, for example, four seconds, about four seconds. I'm going to play only that part, or maybe a little bit later. And once I'm happy with the result, I will just go to composition and make movie or command M as a shortcut. And then from render settings here, I will click on the best settings and make sure that this part called time span will only highlight the work area. Also on the right hand side, I can check that the duration are only the four seconds that I want to output. If that is uh, okay, I can press cancel or okay. I will then go down here where it says output module. I will click on lossless and I will be exporting these lossless as a QuickTime file and animation. I don't need audio in this case. I can just simply render it as it is. I just have to choose where I want to export it. So where it says output to here, I'll be clicking the yellow link and I'll be choosing on my desktop and render this video. Here we go. Now we have rendered the video in After Effects. And in the meantime, I'm opening Photoshop. Any version of Photoshop will do as long as it's past version CS4. And from Photoshop, I will just go to 
file, I will say open. And from my desktop, I'm going to import the same video that I just uh, output. Here we go. These are my four seconds of video output as a quick time movie. You notice from the layers panel that this is indeed a video since there is a film there. I can go to window and uh, animation and into animation, I'll be able to see the timeline of this video. All I need to do is to go to file and I'm going to say save for web and devices. When I say save for web and devices, another user interface will uh, pop up. This user interface might take a little while to load when we are exporting uh, videos. What we have to do is to choose the preset GIF on the right hand side here and uh, make sure we don't click transparency since this video is not a transparent GIF. I remove the transparency. As we try to save for web and devices a video, Photoshop would need to convert every single frame of this video into an individual image. Here we would certainly need to scale the video down, scale the image down, so that our GIF will be lighter and faster to load on a web page. So we will define the size of the image size, in this case, for example, to 800 by 600 or 800 to whatever the height will proportionally adapt to. As you can see at the bottom here, we have an option to loop the video. We can choose another number of times instead of once, we can say forever. So this animation will loop forever from the frame one to the frame 61. I'm going to change the size to 800 by 450. Therefore, the video will be much smaller to play and therefore will also be to play on a website where we share our animated GIF. All we need to do is just to press save. Here we go. We are done. Photoshop has compiled our video into an animated GIF, 800 by 450 pixels size and looping forever the 61 frames. I'm saving the cinemagraph on the desktop and uh, to preview it from the desktop, all I would need to do will be to open that cinemagraph with a web browser. So from my browser, Google Chrome, I will go to file, open file. I will be choosing the cinemagraph GIF that I've just created. And here we go, it will be playing in the browser.